We did a video a while ago on our on-the-go water deionizer. And ever since then, we actually received some comments or some questions about the deionizer and what do you do when your resin is used up and it's just not producing quality water anymore. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get into that, I just kind of want to go at a very, very high level the differences between a water softener and a deionizer. Now, a water softener does what it says it's going to do right in this thing. It really creates a softer water. It does this by there's a resin in the tank and it removes um, minerals like calcium and magnesium. And by, by getting rid of these minerals, the water becomes softer and you can definitely feel it to the touch. That's a water softener. A deionizer or DI produces laboratory grade water. Now, it does this by removing dissolved solids. These are conductive inorganic elements, um, but basically everybody just calls them dissolved solids or the total dissolved solids. That is a deionizer. Both of these work with a resin or resin based. Um, material inside of them. A couple things to be aware of, a couple differences though. A water softener, you can actually regenerate or replenish your resin. The way you do that, there's a um, regeneration process you can follow. We actually did a, a video on that before. We'll put a, put a link up here. But basically what it is, you add salt to your resin, you go through a process, and now your water softener is ready to go again. A deionizer, you really can't do that. And I don't know all the scientific reasons why, but the resin is different. Um, you can regenerate it, but you're going to have to get into chemicals and some pretty detailed processes, which we're just not going to do. The average person, honestly, will remove the old resin and just put in new resin. And that's a, a deionizer. A deionizer also has basically two kinds of deionizer, two types, depending on what you're looking for. You have a dual bed deionizer. Now, this is really used for producing quantities of water. Um, a mixed bed deionizer, which is what we have, is more for like a quality water. So you're really looking for that quality. And that's what we want because we don't, we don't want spots on our RV. And the dual beds is really, I mean, these are like military grade, uh, medical um, applications, um, the laboratory grade water. This is what we're really talking about. So at a high level, that's the differences between a water softener and a deionizer. Okay, we moved over here by our deionizer. And really to get this whole process started, how do you know when you need to replace your resin? And that's where this TDS meter comes in. This basically reads total dissolved solids. Now spotting, if you're concerned about spotting or washing your RV, spotting can actually start anywhere between 20 and 30 parts per million and anywhere on up in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, just to start everything out, kind of get a baseline, we'll take our TDS meter meter. We're going to get some water coming out of the deionizer. We'll test it and let's see where we start from. That way when we come back at the end after we replaced our resin, we can look at it again and see how much better we're doing. So TDS meter. Now a, kind of a ballpark if you're looking for how long does this stuff even last. Generally speaking, um, and if you're only using your deionizer to rinse something, not to wash it and rinse it, but only the rinse process, a typical car, you can get about 90 washes uh, for a car. A typical Class A RV, about 15 washes for that. So that should give you a general idea on how long this resin should last. We just got some water from our deionizer. We're going to test it with a TDS meter. See if I can hold this for you. So we have 25 parts per million. It's really not that bad. Hopefully we'll see if it zooms in or if this focuses for you. But we're at 25 parts per million. So now we know we're right in, that, right in the middle of that, that window where spotting can start to occur. So we're gonna go ahead and replace our resin and that's what we're gonna get into right now. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get started replacing our resin. Now, if you do have these bypass valves, I just simply took mine off. You probably don't have to. It's just gonna, I think it's gonna make things a little bit easier. As a matter of fact, if you don't have these, I love these, these are awesome. But all we have to do is unscrew the head. Okay, that's the head and the distribution tube down here. We'll clean all this stuff off in, in a minute, but that's basically it. We're gonna um, take this apart. We're just gonna hose this down. Also, what we're gonna do is take our old resin and just dump it into a container. Now this resin is environmentally safe resin. Um, it's safe to dispose, but you should really, you know, check your local uh, ordinance as far as disposing of resin, but um, it, it is environmentally safe. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this stuff apart. We'll take this apart, clean it up, and dump out our resin. Now that we got our parts clean, all we have to do now is we're just gonna dump this resin. This is actually the box, the shipping box that the new resin came in. I'm just gonna dump all this in here. There's gonna be some water and stuff, but it's fine. We're gonna pack this up and, um, and dump it, but throw it away. But let's get rid of this resin. That looks nasty. <laughs> That's a lot lighter. <laughs> um, so we just dumped all the resin out of this. Now what I'll do is I'll take my hose again. I'm gonna flush this out really good to get all the remaining resin out of here. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, we got everything apart. Might as well take the extra five minutes and get as much out of this, of the old resin as we can. Almost. And we'll just do this a couple more times. Hopefully you can see this. Everything's cleaned out. Um, we did a pretty good job. We rinsed this out two or three times. There's nothing in here right now. So now it's just a matter of pretty much reversing the process. First thing we're gonna do is put our distributor tube back in. Now the secret to this, when you put it in, you're gonna have to put the resin in slowly because you really want that tube to get centered, centered uh, down the middle. It's gonna make it easier to reattach it to the head when we get to that point. So uh, this is all set. Let's get our, our parts and our new resin and get this into the, into the deionizer. Okay, we got all the resin out of our tank. Now we're just gonna reverse the process. First thing we're gonna do is put our distribution tube or distributor tube back in. Now, one thing we wanna be careful of with this is we wanna to try to keep it in the center as much as possible. And what that means is as we're pouring resin, we may have to move this around a little bit, but it's gonna make it a little bit easier once we go to screw the top back on. Now, something that comes with the kit it's this little blue cap. We're gonna put this over the tube and the whole purpose of this is we wanna to try to keep resin out from getting into the tube itself. Okay, so now no, no resin can get inside the tube. Something else that comes with the kit is a funnel. We have our funnel. Now it's just a matter of pouring the resin in. We'll probably have to do this slow, tap it as we go just to pack, pat everything down. You can also use like a little cup or a scoop or something like that if you can't do the whole bag. And in case you're wondering, this is a 20 pound bag. This is the double, uh, the double standard, and it's about a half a cubic foot of resin. And we do want to get this whole bag of resin in here. 
So you may have to pack it down a little bit if you can't quite get it all in there. Only slow and constant good for making winter soften seasons only nature calling. Okay, so we got all of our resin in here. It's sitting up right about here. I'll grab the GoPro again, show you where it's at. Um, hopefully you can see it's about an inch or two from the top so it's all in next thing we have to do is start assembling it just a couple things to note there are a couple places there's a, a rubber grommet uh, up in the, in the head here and also in here we want to make sure it's clean they do give you a little bit of uh, silicone grease and we will put that on at the vet at the kind of the last stage once I get things ready to go but we do want to make sure things are clean before we put everything back together so we're just going to take our little blue cap off and this little filter thing goes back over the distribution tube make sure I don't have any grass on it Okay, so now I do want to use my silicone. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. Again, this does come with the kit. I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger. I'm just going to get this across the top. And I'm sure there's better ways of doing this without using your fingers, but... I think we're good there. And there is also, hopefully you can see, there's a little rubber gasket in here. We're gonna make sure this is uh, siliconed as well. Got that. And then there's also the one across the top. Uh, you got this grommet right around here. There we go. Okay, so I got that. I ended up taking that off. I, this is just twist on. Now I can put it on here over the tube. And we'll just, at this point, just screw everything back. Now this head does not have to be gorilla tight. I put it on fairly snug, um, just, just kind of firm, I'll put it that way, but it doesn't have to be super, super tight. So that is it. So now all we have left to do, we're gonna put our bypass valves back on, hook the hose back up. What we're gonna do now, and also after we do that, we're gonna let this water run for just a couple minutes. And what that does is if there's any resin residue in there, maybe in the tubes like that, it's gonna help get that out of the water. Then we'll do one more test with our TDS meter and see how well we did. Okay, let's see how we did. We have our TDS meter in a cup. We'll fill this up. I'm just gonna turn this off so we don't have to talk over it. Um, we're at zero right now. We'll put this in. Wow, zero parts per million. Let me hold this. And hopefully you can see that if it focuses on you. Okay, so we got zero parts per million. So it, we just kind of showed you that redoing the, the resin did what it's supposed to do. And uh, we're, we're good to go for another roughly 15 washes on our RV. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please leave a comment below and let us know. And if you, if you have a deionizer, let us know how you use it and how, how well you like it as well. Remember, always live life to the fullest.